Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 55. If you want to download this workbook or the PDFs, click on the link below the video. Hey, over in the PDFs near the end, pages 30 through 33, it has all of the Excel functions for all the formulas we're doing for hypothesis testing in this chapter 9. So that's a good one to download. Hey, this is our third video. This In this video, we're going to see how to do a hypothesis test when sigma is known and it's a two-tail test. Now last video we did, we looked at bottles of yummy red ketchup that had labeling of 16 ounces and we did it from a consumer group's point of view where they thought they were potentially underfilling. This example is going to be from the manufacturer's point of view and we'll see that how we set up the hypothesis test is different than the consumer. This is the manufacturer, so the point of view will be different and the setup will be different. So we have this yummy red ketchup. The label says 16 ounces. The bottle filling factory wants to make sure the filling machine is filling accurately. They do not want to fill too little and make the customer unhappy. And they do not want to fill too much and thus decrease profits. At the alpha of 0.05 is the process out of control, meaning is the machine filling correctly? And we know the population standard deviation from past data. All right, so always important to know your point of view. The point of view of this example here is manufacturers want to make sure that the machine is filling accurately. We're considering the population of all possible bottles that could come off the filling line. And our goal is to run a hypothesis test to provide statistical evidence to show whether the machine is filling accurately, yes or no. This is a two-tail, right? Because we care on either end if it's too much or too little. The first two examples we did in the last two videos, we cared about too much or too little. This one, we care about both. So I'm going to go straight to the null hypothesis, and I'm going to type space equals and 16 ounces. Now I'm going to put hypothesized mean down here, 16 ounces. All right, and then I'm going to come up here and make a link to that. All right, and last two examples, we started with the comparative operator for the alternative hypothesis. But this is a two-tail, so we go, hey, we start with that one. If this one's equal, this one is not equal. So I'm going to space less than, greater than. Now that's just how you do not comparative operator in Excel. All right, and this one's 16 ounces also. So there's our alternative, our null. The null is going to indicate that it seems reasonable that the machine is filling accurately. If we accept the alternative, this will indicate the machine is not filling accurately. If it's not filling accurately, then you need to shut it down and fix the filling equipment. And this is a common example for machines that fill things, whether it's lettuce or bags of M&Ms or whatever it is. All right, our alpha, we're going to use 0.05. We'll come down here. We'll put in our uh, details and then do some calculating. We know that population standard deviation is 0.5 ounces. We don't have sample. We will next video when we do the T distribution. The statistic to use, well, it's Z because we know sigma. The sample size equals count because we have numbers. Control shift down arrow, shift enter. So we have a sample of 36. So we went out there and took right off the filling machine line a sample of 36. Our x bar, we'll use the average function to calculate the mean. Control shift down arrow, and then enter. Alpha, the type of test, this is a two tail. All right, our standard error, that's our standard deviation for the sampling distribution of x bars. We're going to say our sigma divided by the square root of our n, 0 0.083. Our test statistic, particular x bar minus hypothesized mean. Actually, I'm going to round this just like we did in the last video, round it to the whatever formula it is. or you use the round function. That number just means the thing. And this can be as small a formula or as big, because sometimes they're big. And then you comma and tell it how many digits. We want to round to the second digit. All right, now let's do our test statistic. 
the numerator is x bar minus mu. That tells us the actual sampling error, or the point estimate of the difference. And we're going to divide it by our standard error. So we get 1.44. So that's 1.44 standard deviations above. Let's look at this picture here. All right, so there's a picture of the situation when you're doing a two-tail. You have these two hurdles. Now we're given alpha of 0.5, so the alpha on each end has to add up to 0 0.5, 0 0.05. So we have to divide by 2, so it's going to be 0 0.025. That determines the hurdle there. 0 0.025 determines the hurdle there. Anything to the left or to the right, we reject our null hypothesis except the alternative. If we reject, it means the machine is not filling accurately. Any value within here, it seems reasonable that the machine is filling accurately. All right, so let's calculate our p-value. Now, when you get to a two-tail test, you got to think about this. Here's this 1.44, and the way p-value works is wherever it is here, wherever it is, it tells you with a positive number the probability of getting 1.44 or more. That's just on this side when there's a two-tail test. You have to double whatever single p-value you get. And we'll see a picture of that down here in just a moment. Now there's two different ways we can do this. I'm going to start with the idea that 1.44, well, these functions go from negative infinity up to that 1.44. And I'm interested in the upper part. So I'm going to say equals 1 minus, and then do my uh, norm s dis, r z comma 1 cumulative. Remember, that 1.4 calculates everything from here up to that 1.44. But since I'm interested in the upper end, I do 1 minus. Now that gives me 7.5% or 0 0.075 approximately. But this is a two-tail. That test says the probability in the upper end, you have to double it for a two-tail. Now if I come to the end and multiply it by 2, that will not work because we have to force that subtraction first. So I'm going to force the subtraction first. Now actually, this formula that I just did right there is not in the PDFs. Here's the one that's in the PDF. And either one is fine. Because this curve is symmetric, not, not the way I drew it, draw it, but the, the standard normal curve or the sampling distribution of x bars is symmetric. If we have 1.44 here, the 1.44 on the low end is symmetrically placed, and the probability below it is the same as the probability above the 1.44 here. So we can not use them 1 minus and all that parentheses if we just use norm.s dist and trick it. If it's a positive here, I'm just going to say a negative. OK, so what that's going to do, if there's a 1.44 here, probability above, I'm tricking it. I'm going to say the probability below. And that gives me that same 7, and then you can multiply by 2. Either one is fine. Now clearly, with our p-value rule, it's always going to be anytime p-value is less than or equal to alpha, reject h sub 0 except h sub a, otherwise fail to reject. So in this case, we just flat out fail to reject. 14 is bigger than 5. Now the critical value method, that's where we calculate based on our alpha a z and then compare it straight to here. This will be the hurdle. If this is past, this 1.44 is past the hurdle, we know to reject h sub 0. So we're going to use norm.s inverse. Now I want to calculate the low end, right? So this is alpha divided by 2. So I'm simply going to take alpha divided by 2 minus 1.9. 6. And if we want, since it's symmetric, we simply have to take the opposite of that. Now watch this. Usually we go equals minus. If you just type minus and click right here, Control Enter, what it does is if you put a minus or a plus as the first character in the cell, Excel knows it's a formula and puts in the equal sign for you. All right, so this rule, critical value rule is the test statistic. If it's between those two, not including the ends, then you fail to reject. So that's this region right here. Now, actually, I wrote this rule slightly different than the book and also in my PDFs because 
Uh, I talked about this region here. It's just a little bit shorter. If I say if the test statistic is between these, I fail to reject H sub O. Otherwise, I reject H sub 0 except H sub A. It's just a little bit shorter when you write it out. So I put if the test statistic is between the negative and the positive critical value, we fail to reject H sub 0. Otherwise, reject H sub 0 and accept H sub A. All right, so in either case, we have come to the same conclusion. Let's look at our picture here. Again, here's that picture of the p-value. We have a 1.44. The p-value tells us the probability of getting that or greater. We have to double it. So we double it times 2. So we get about 0.15, if you round that right there. Here's our critical values, and clearly the test statistic is between those. This is not symmetric. I didn't draw that one very well. And now our conclusions. Based on the p-value, because the p-value of 0.15 is greater than alpha 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Critical value, because the test statistic of 1.4 is between our two critical values, we fail to reject H sub 0. That means the sample evidence suggests that the machine is filling properly. Said another way, at alpha of 0.05, the sample mean of 16.12 ounces does not provide statistically significant evidence to suggest that the process is out of control. In essence, our sampling error was not significant enough for us to stop the machine, take it apart, fix it. Uh, we do run a 5% risk of a type 1 error, which means we might say the machine is filling accurately when it is not. All right, so that's the third example of hypothesis testing. All three of our examples so far have been sigma known. We've seen upper tail, one tail to the right, lower tail, one tail to the left, and two tail. In our next video, we'll talk about what we do when we don't know sigma, and we use the t distribution. All right, see you next video.